Good morning. You may be seated. Thank you. The message, your faith will not fail. Let me take you to the book of Luke 22 from verse 1 to the end. But we go straight to the proof test. Luke 22, verse 32. Are you there? But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Look at the wall, turn back. This is the way you are going. I go this way, and you are saying, T.B. Joshua, when you have turned back, remember your brother. When you have turned back, remember your brother. Also, help them to turn back. Let's read verse 33. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Ah, that is too confident. The Lord is telling him that uh, I'm afraid of you. No, don't be afraid of me. I'm for you. I doubt you will be able to stand for me. No, don't doubt or I can die for you. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the root star crossed, today you will deny three times that you know me. Jesus knew that he's going to betray him. Jesus said to him again, after you have repented, he is to strengthen his brothers. Jesus knew that Peter will betray him and also knew that he will repent. You are here today. Jesus knows you will repent. Tell your neighbor. Because he knows you, even though whatever happened, you are a stakeholder of the kingdom of God. You have a seat. If your seat is empty, you know nobody can take over their seat. You will still come back. Tell your neighbor, Jesus knows I will repent. If that is the case, as a born again, your faith may fail, but not utterly, not fall off. Tell your neighbor, my faith may fail, not utterly. I mean, not fall off. Again? Yes, your faith may fail as born again, but not utterly, that is, not fall off. Because that faith is your root, your seed. It remains in you. That is, you will still come back. If you are a true born again, your faith may fail. Not what? Not utterly. That is, me, you will still come back. If you have run now, if you have missed the mark, you will still come back. Amen. That is the meaning of born again. Once you are born again, no one and nothing can separate you from God. It is just to be born again, genuinely. But if you are not genuinely born again, forget. But if you are genuinely born again, nothing and nothing can separate you. Your faith may fail, not utterly, not fall off. Once you are born again, you cannot make a mistake. These are the teaching. And when you are now making a mistake, ah, you don't want people to know. You know what mistake can lead one? Mistake cause serious, difficult circumstances. Mistake cause difficult work. And the true difficult circumstances, you will be offended. Through situation, you'll be offended. If you have a pain now, or headache, or fever, or cancer, and that pain is all over you. Little too can offend you. 
Little too can overwhelm you. Even people greet you, mm, don't greet me. As if they are the one who put cancer in your body. Through pain, through difficult circumstances, it may be disappointment. You went to the company and uh, you expected to receive some goods. Get it there, they say there's nothing like that. Or you get it to your company, they give you a sack letter. Ha! Get it to your company, you realize that the young one you train has been promoted to head you. Ha! As a human being, how will you feel? Offense. Whatever you begin to do at that moment will not come from your heart. Everything around will irritate and overwhelm you. You will not want to give your best. Even if you see money, you want to dupe. You want to embezzle. You want to change figure. Through difficult circumstances, you'll be offended. You wake up in the morning, you find that you have nightmare. Suddenly you look at your bed, you saw, you wet the bed, a lot of things happen to you in the dream. By the time you wake up, you feel irritated. If our faith is being kept up in an hour of temptation, though we may fall, that is, our faith may fall. Yet, we can be no utterly cast down. In the case of his disciple, Jesus said, I pray your faith will not fail. Are you with me? Amen. Your faith may fail, but not what? Not totally, not finally. As it was with Job. With God, permission, you can be tempted. You know, Satan went to God to beg, allow me to do this to this man. Satan desire for you, Christian, is to have you, is to attack you. Don't forget, he begged for permission from God to attack Job. With God's permission, you can be attacked. With God's permission, you can be tempted. So you Christian, if you now say, ah, why all this has happened to me? Why this, why this attack? I'm a Christian. No. With God's permission, you can be tempted. If God allow it, if God has knowledge of it, if God is aware, as was the case of Job. Don't doubt your God. Don't begin to doubt why me. Uh, am I not serving living God? Why God should allow this to happen? Don't doubt your God. Don't let it affect your faith. You can be attacked, but you cannot be destroyed. If God allows, what has happened to you as you born again? You born again. What has happened to you? As it was with Job. With God's permission, Satan can tempt you. As it was with Job, with God's permission, Satan can attack you, but cannot destroy you. Tell your neighbor, if you're a true born again, a true follower of Christ, Satan can only attack you if God permits. That means it can only attack you if God permits it. Such attack 
will resort to your desire for God. Will strengthen your desire for God. Will strengthen your determination for God. Will improve your relationship. Such attack will make you strong. Such attack will not impair you, but improve you. If God permits. It is when you know this, you become a beneficiary that this is attack. Who are you? I'm a child of God. Yes, God is aware. God's permit is. And is going to improve me, strengthen my desire, my determination. I'm not here today to tell you about Moses, Jeremiah, but I'm telling you about what is happened to you. Amen. Exactly what is happened to you. You will have been growing in your Christian life better than this. But each time this attack comes, you forgot that you are a Christian. And if you know you are a Christian, you are a follower of God, you should know that God has knowledge of it. And if God has knowledge of it, it means this attack will not impair you, but improve you. If God is aware, this means this temptation will make you stronger. If God allow it, this means your desire and your determination to go will increase. This is just it. It's only we cannot continue to pray for attack or temptation. It comes naturally if God allow it. It's a blessing. If you are not a Christian, opposite is the case. We know if you are not a Christian, Satan cannot attack his children. Can Satan attack his children? If Satan cannot attack his children, you are not his children. That is why you are attacked. Tell your neighbor, your faith will not fail. I can hear you. This coming year, your faith will not fail. Our situation, I mean, our difficult circumstances. Satan used them to draw us into sin. Satan used our situation, our difficult circumstances, to draw us into war, into sin. The moment this attack comes, your thoughts change. Ah, you begin to see God in a bad light. Ah. Oh, my God. Ah. You begin to see God in the bad, bad light. Your Savior will now turn to, uh, to pray difficult because your heart is not in a best state. It is when your heart, your spirit is in a best state you can pray, but you are worried. No one can pray to God while you worry. Tell your neighbor, no one can pray to God while you worry. You will make an attempt, but you are not praying to God. You are praying to yourself. You are worried. Ah, ah, ah. You will not say, Jesus, give me biscuit. Jesus. No, 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 no. Your heart must be at its best. Because our heart is the prayer room. Can you see why you keep deceiving yourself? Our heart is the prayer room. Tell your neighbor. Say, my heart is the prayer room. So, if your heart is the prayer room, your heart must be at its best. If your heart is the prayer room, where you keep as a prayer room, as an altar. Here, look at the altar. 
If you come this morning and you saw shit, urine, flying everywhere, does be we'll be able to sit down. So in the same day, if your heart is not at its best, whom are you praying to? If you are troubled, you cannot pray. And if you pray, you are praying of yourself. That is why the enemy will often use this as a bait to get you, your situation. Satan uses our situation, our difficult circumstances, disappointment, failure, nightmare, everything around you not go where. Satan uses all this to draw us into sin. You know, that is the only thing that can change your heart. Your heart that is his best, you think about cry, you meditate, you sing. But when trouble comes, you change your confession. You begin to see Jesus in the bad light. That is why Satan was waiting a time like that to attack Jesus. After he realized Jesus has fasted 40 to 49, he realized that this man needs food. And you know when you have been fasted for 40 to 49 and you need food badly, oh yeah, this is the time to attack this man. Situation. This is the time to attack this man. Difficult circumstances. Oh yeah, he has difficult now. He needs food. He now took him. Begin to, to seduce him with food and every beautiful thing in the world. But thank God, he was not desperate. But today you are desperate. Your desperation leads you to take anything, no matter where or which direction. So far you have a relief. Jesus was not desperate. Jesus said, although I'm hungry, but I'm not desperate. Although I'm hungry, I've been fasting for 40 days, 49, I am looking for something to eat, but I'm not desperate. To be desperate is to be so unsure what food, food, where? You don't mind where food comes from, you just want to eat. So far it's food, and you tasted it's good. As Jesus gave food, Satan too has his own food. His food lasted now, but God's food lasted for eternity. This is why you can receive blessing as you receive it, it disappears. You become a millionaire today, next year you become a poor man. He said, the peace I give, the money I give, and the food I'm giving you, not as the war give, not as Satan give them. Satan will give you all this, looking like what the one I give you. But the difference is, at the time you need it more, it disappears. You see many a time, some of the blessing you need now, at the time you need those blessings most, you can't find them. In summary, as it was with Job, with God's permission, you can be tempted. As it was with Job, with God's permission, you can be attacked by Satan. If you look around and you see, yes, you're a follower of God, nothing wrong, an attack come. You should know that God is aware. God has knowledge of it. God allow it. I heard, let it come. Promotion is about to come. When God is aware of what you are going through, what has happened to you, yes, the question is, what does he want to prove? Ask yourself, what does he want to prove? Ask yourself, ask yourself, speak louder. Speak to yourself and speak out. And you pray, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I have a day, I have a day, I have a day, hear me. And you are not here, you say you don't have faith. You shouldn't base your faith on the healing of your sickness. You may not be here, 
yet you have faith. So this is the challenge we have now. We always base our faith on improvement of our prayer. We base our faith on what? Huh? Improvement of what? Our prayer. If you pray and pray and your prayer answer, you agree you have faith. And if you pray and pray, your prayer is not answered, you don't have faith. It honor God. When we believe in him, when every sense is contradicting, everything not good, and you still believe in him, he honor him more than when everything good and you believe in him. Are you with me? That is, it honor God most, best, when you believe in him, when everything look bad, than believe in him when things look good. You are in the church today because everything seems to look bad. But the moment they turn around and you begin to count thousand trailers, thousand houses, million and all that, you change your rich wash and look at it and say, no, 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 Joshua, I can't sit here. It's too warm. It's too hot. But here it's not hot now. You are ready to sit down. Now you are here today, and uh, which I believe that uh, next you become S loser. <laughs> S loser. So you need to believe God the same way, if not more the way you believe in him now. And also, always realize that your difficult situation and difficult circumstances are the things Satan used to drag you into sin. You know, sin begins in our hearts. The war you are seeing today, that war started from the heart. The discussion, ah, we are going to do this, we are going to do that, we are going to do that, before plan. So therefore, the wrong or whatever you might have, have done started from your heart. So when Satan used our situation, our difficult circumstances to drag us into sin, me, the moment you are attacked, Either nightmare, when you wake up, it's always difficult for you to pray. When you wake up and you find that this is bad, this is nightmare. Even when you pray, you pray with disturbed hearts. And when you pray with disturbed hearts, you are not praying to God, but you pray to yourself. So that is attack. He used those attacks to drag us to sin to separate us from God, to overthrow us from our position as a child of God. So any time there is attack, if anyone tell you because you are a Christian, you will not be attacked. What of if God permit it? What of if God allow it? What of if God has knowledge of it? What of if God is aware? So also faith is your rule to God. There's nothing you can do with root, unless you don't have that root at all. It's your seed. It remains in you, no matter how fair, but not finally, not totally. May God bless his word. Thank you, thank you. How does this message apply to you? Can somebody stand up to tell me? I'm a Christian. Thank you. Before clap, now. Uh, clap for the him. Message. Clap for him. So he said he's a Christian. 
not only just a Christian by mere Christian, but is a born again. If I'm right. You're right. Sir. Okay, yeah. Let's you can answer the this question. It's an inspiration. But uh, as a Christian before now, how did you handle the issue of faith? You say you're a born again. What were, were your understanding of issue of faith? Tell us before now. Before now, when I get something, when I feel hot, I get discouraged. Good. So with this message, it gives you an inspiration that any temptation in life is an improvement, a test to prove my trust in God, hmm. to inspire me to believe God the more. Okay, there is a question you need to ask yourself. When there is an attack or whatever you are facing, you need to ask yourself, are you still a born again? If you can answer that question yourself, I'm a born again. Good. There's another question. What does God want to prove? God wants to prove himself as faithful when I'm facing temptation. If I will encourage myself with this message today, there's an inspiration that when I face temptation, I know that God wants to improve my life through that trial to become a testimony in my life. Thank you. And uh, never you forget that it honor him more to believe God when we are facing challenges. Tell your neighbor. That is, it honor God more to believe in him when we are facing difficult circumstances. Or to believe in when we are facing difficult challenges now. And uh, you want to improve your relationship with God. That is the time to improve it. Oh my God. Every true Christian would like to improve their relationship with God. No matter how the level of your relationship with God, you want improvement, improvement, improvement. You want to, you want to sleep and say, vision. You want to he understand his voice. You want to hear his voice in your heart. You want God to talk to you. You want to talk to God. You want to feel him. You want to reach that level. You want to see vision. You want to know God's opinion about yourself and about others. But yet, you are a true Christian, true born again, but yet, you can't tell people opinion of God about others. Even you don't know your opinion of God about yourself. What kind of Christian are you? Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are going to ask a different question entirely. And you first of all tell us your position before God. What do you understand about attack now, if you are a Christian, sir? As a journalist, I have... Um different opinion about what attack is all about. I believe that attack is different from one country to another. The way you got attacked in the Western world is totally different from the way you got attacked in Africa. So I see that of Africa attack as more spiritual, but the other world is just by the grace of God. But I have the contrary opinion to what the man of God said before I got here. As a journalist, I was looking for news to write. But when you say something about Peter Simon, if Peter Simon could fail, who am I? A mere mortal. I could <laughs> fail any time. Okay, what my brother said now, I want somebody to answer this question. What type of attack are we talking about? Or temptation are we talking about? Can somebody? Any foolish thing that the devil can use against us, be it sickness, or children turning against you. I want to thank you. Thank you. What do you understand about this so-called attack? Uh, to me, as a Christian and a born again, I believe that an attack is anything that would want to, for me to react or to diminish my faith in Christ. And the way we react or we want to defend ourselves during the attack, it really matters. So as a child of God, when any attack comes, we have to think and we know that any attack, it is one way God uses to make us have much more faith in him. What I learned through this message are two characteristics of a true born again. Number one is that a true born again, we know him when he misses the mark because naturally he comes back to repentance. And second, is that a true born again can be attacked only when God permits. So this is to improve his faith and make him come closer in his relationship 
with God. And this will help him. Thank you. Thank you. You listen to what you say. There's two things he said here. That uh, a true born again, when it's satire, it will surely come back to repentance. That is true born again. It comes naturally. That you are born again does not mean you cannot be attacked. But the difference between you and those who are not born again is that when you are attacked, you will come to repentance. That is born again. But those who are not born again, when they attack them, they attack back and continue to live that life of attack. And the, the attack they receive will make them to go deeper in the dark. From witch doctor to another, from another to another, begin to point accused finger, looking for his, I mean, attacker. A time of attack is a time of promotion. Improvement, to improve your relationship with God. Take note, when you are born again, nothing can separate you from the love of God. And what is the love of God? Love of God is the will of God. Love of God is the internal life. It is all about born again. You need to be born again. You just need to check yourself, am I really born again? And how do we know we are born again? Sit down, sir. Can somebody tell me, how do you know you are born again? Приветствую вас всех, дорогая церковь. Я с Узбекистана, из Ташкента. Я могу сказать ой, свое свидетельство, что как я рождена свыше, несмотря на все мои обстоятельства в моей жизни, несмотря на то, как, ну, бывают тоже атаки, когда я собиралась к вам, и у меня заблокировали карточку, что я не могла снять деньги, и потом я встала на колени и говорю, Господь, это твоя поездка, я ее посвятила тебе, я должна быть там. И я сказала, Господь, я благодарю тебя, я не смотрю ни на что, я просто прославляла Бога, и Господь за считанные просто там 15-20 минут. Commonly, she says that she is from Uzbekistan, and when she was coming here in her way, she was attacked and her bank card was blocked, but she uh, went into prayer and said, Lord, this is your will, and if you want me to be there, I will be there. So she received it, uh, she humbled herself, and Lord opened for her way to come here. Anything close to Jesus receives attack. Anything close to Jesus receives what? Receives attack. It's not only coming here. Even when you are applying for a job, and that job will benefit you, and that job, your life depends on that job, and it's a destiny job you receive a lot, immediately you thought of applying the attack starts. 